In the previous unit, we talked about how to take partial derivatives of multivariable functions. Now we're going to go the other way and talk about how to take integrals of multivariable functions. This particular video is an intro to double integrals over rectangles. So in order to find the area under a curve on a fixed interval a, b in calculus 2, we partitioned the interval into n subintervals, created n rectangles whose heights were estimated by the function, found the area of each rectangle, and added up all of the areas. And what happened then was we got an integral. So we started out with some function f of x in the xy plane, and some given interval, a to b, and we wanted to find the area between the function and the x-axis. So we created all of these small rectangles, each of them having a width of delta x, or the small change in x, and each of them having a height of f of x sub i, where x sub i was some x value within that sub-interval over which the rectangle was um, created. Now the area was the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. So the area of each rectangle was f of x sub i times delta x. And this turned into our integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that's how we found area under a curve in calculus 2. And this method for estimating the area was called a Riemann sum. Now we're going to use a similar method in calculus 3 to find the volume under some um, two-dimensional, some three-dimensional um, curve um, between the curve and the xy plane. So we also use the method of Riemann sums in Calculus 3 in order to estimate the volume under a surface. To find the volume under the surface, f of xy over a rectangular region r from x going from a to b and y going from c to d, we first divide r into n rectangular pieces. So we have this overall rectangle created by x going from a to b and y going from c to d. We divide it into these sub-rectangles, and for the width of each rectangle, each sub-rectangle, we'll call it delta x sub k, and the height of each sub-rectangle we'll call delta y sub k. So then the area, delta a sub k, of each rectangle is going to equal delta x sub k times delta y sub k. The height of each rectangular solid is determined by evaluating the function f of x y at a point x sub k y sub k inside the partition. So basically we have this, um, this surface z equals f of x y and we have all of these little rectangular solids whose base is the delta a sub k and whose height is f of x sub k y sub k. So the function evaluated at some point within that sub-interval rectangle. Now just like in calculus 2, as n increases, so the number of rectangles or sub-rectangles increases, the Riemann sum approximations approach the total volume of the solid. So here's some examples. For n equals 16, you can see that we have kind of a chunky formation. We're not really approaching that smooth surface. For n equals 64, you start to see that surface a little better. And then for n equals 256, you can see the rectangles are so small that you're basically estimating the area under that surface. Now, we, we're interested in letting n go to infinity. 
So this leads to the following formula for the exact volume under the surface f of xy over the region r. The volume is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k y sub k times delta a sub k, so height times the area of the base. Now I can rewrite this as a double integral over the region r of f of x y dA. So dA is that small change in area of the base of the rectangle. And another way to write this is um, actually the double rectangle over region r of f of x y dx dy. Now this double integration is called a double integral and sometimes it's also called an iterated integral. So if you hear either of those terms it's talking about the same thing. It means that you're going to be doing integration twice with respect to a different variable each time. Now in the next video we'll actually go through an example using this formula.